Welcome to another segment of Dan Storm. We're going to continue forward with our previous discussion about joining the UK Foundation program. Um, so once you actually apply for the UBI two-year program or the one-year program, you find out in March uh, where you've been allocated. That's based on your score from the SJTs as well as your clinical assessment and your overall application score, which is determined primarily from your application score coming from your uh, uh, credentials in, term, in terms of your medical, medical school uh, achievements and your publications, as well as the SJT score. I know they've slightly changed that for the upcoming year in 2023. A lot more emphasis is being placed on the SJTs individually, but uh, moving forward, once you get an application score, a candidate matches into the program that they've ranked based on the preference of their choice. And once that happens, about approximately March, you find out exactly where you've matched into and you start in August. So I was fortunate enough to match into South Thames Foundation program and I was allocated to the Kent, uh, Kent Surrey and Sussex Deanery, uh, which basically handles, which is basically allocated to a very massive geographical location. It stretches all the way from Margate in the east, southeast and also has some uh, allocations of sites primarily around the London area as well. So it's, it's a very massive geographical location, but um, the, the placement I actually was able to secure was in um, Ashford, and uh, my first placement was in psychiatry. So I'm actually in psychiatry at the moment. <clears throat> I will be finishing psychiatry in about less than a month. It has been an absolutely amazing experience so far. I'm fortunate to have wonderful um, senior colleagues as well as my supervisor and my clinical consultants. It's been a, an, an amazing journey so far. I can't begin to even describe how I feel, but uh, my first two months in the NHS, starting off in psychiatry, I've made amazing connections with my colleagues, with, my, uh, with people from all different departments. I've been, I've been able to learn um, different aspects of the MSc very closely. We uh, use the MSc in psychiatry very uh, vigorously. Every single day, every patient is assessed using the MSc, and the MSc is an absolute bedrock foundation of psychiatry. I've been able to learn the MSc and how to, uh, how to apply the skills of the MSc in a clinical interview. And um, once again, my, se my seniors, my supervisors, and my consultant, uh, one in particular who's actually my education, uh, she's actually my education supervisor as well as my clinical consultant and my clinical supervisor. She's been a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, teacher as well as a clinical consultant. Her bedside manners, her uh, approach to each clinical case, her way of teaching, her way of being able to uh, understand clinical concepts and to translate that over to her trainees is phenomenal. I've been able to learn a lot of uh, very important psychiatric principles, uh, starting from mood, how to actually assess mood disorders, moving to more, um, you know, more complex cases of mixed disorders and schizophrenia and schizoaffective. It's been an absolutely wonderful experience. Moving, transitioning over from textbook clinical uh, application of medicine to actually applying medicine bedside in terms of doing clinical interviews and actually doing patient management is an absolutely critical element that is very easily um, lost in the trans uh, transition period. You need to understand that certain elements that we read in textbooks and see, read in medicine, we, when we pl apply that to patients, there is a certain uh, period of adjustment that everybody goes through. And I really, really did have uh, a very good understanding of like, you know, being able to adopt to that, in, uh, at that adjustment period. And the MSc, once again, I can't stress this uh, as much, but uh, in psychiatry, MSc is the hallmark bedmark. It's the foundation of what really uh, makes a good uh, assessment and a good clinical interview. So I was able to understand that very uh, well with, uh, because of the teachings and the supervision of my clinical consultant and my education supervisor. She's phenomenal. I do recommend psychiatry for people that are really interested and you know, very passionate about learning how to actually you know, uh, deal with psych psychiatric principles, how to, employ, uh, how to deploy psychiatric clinical interviews, and how to, act, how to actually navigate the different uh, levels of psychiatry because psychiatry is a very vast and very broad uh, scope in terms of its cl clinical practice. Uh, at the moment, I'm enjoying my clinical psychiatry placement. It is been, it's been really, really nice. Uh, we don't really know what you can expect every single day in psychiatry. Walking into, like, you know, going into work as a, as a psychiatry, as a trainee right now in my psychiatry placement, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna see every single day, which is another element that actually helps you keep, uh, br uh, keep yourself brushed up to date for all the different things you can actually, uh, you know, see in a day. So psychiatry is such a broad-based, uh, you know, specialty that you're not going to be able to prepare yourself as to what you will see on a daily basis but there are guidelines that you can actually familiarize yourself with that'll help you 
in order to see majority of the things that are like, you know, on a regular uh, basis that you'll be exposed to. So that's actually one of the big things that I've been able to actually, like, you know, deploy, uh, like, you know, look at in terms of the BNF and CK guidelines, read, uh, reading the Oxford Handbook of Psychiatry. That really helps you uh, understand how the, uh, the differences between the DSM-5 criteria and the ICD-10 and ICD-11 criteria that's actually followed in the UK. But uh, once again, my colleagues have been absolutely amazing here. Uh, there are different levels of training that are actually uh, simultaneously connected within one program. So you'll have a core trainee, you'll have a specialty trainee doctors, and you'll have your foundation trainee doctors working side by side. And that's, an action, that's a very good way of actually learning for a junior because they are exposed to different levels of training for psychiatry. And it helps, um, helps the junior learn different strategies and different ways to be able to effectively obtain all the different information. It's, uh, it's been a very, uh, you know, it's a very learning experience in the beginning. For the first couple of months, you're just going to be able to learn how things work in the NHS. How do you, you know, go out of your way or how do you actually uh, communicate with your colleagues and try to like, you know, work on a case together because there's a big element of, of working in, in a group to achieve, um, you know, to achieve your goal. And once again, I do believe, I'm a big firm believer in group practice, being able to merge different skills in, uh, that different people bring bring that together and work together to actually achieve a solution to a problem. So that's been really um, been my focus uh, in the first couple of months in psychiatry, how to learn different uh, you know, skill sets of how to approach different cases differently, how to be able to manage patients and provide the best care, but also keeping in mind that you do need to know when to seek senior support, when do you have to actually make sure that this is within your paradigm of being able to manage this, and um, it's, it's a very good work-life uh, work balance because there are some, uh, there, in psychiatry, you're able to manage your schedule very effectively because there is a work-life balance in this, uh, in this specialty. So that's also one of the added benefits of this specialty. Other specialties do have different, uh, you know, schedules, different, uh, different rotas, they call them rotas, but uh, in psychiatry, it's actually very good in terms of being able to manage work-life balance. So that's also an added benefit for psychiatry, but overall my experience in psychiatry in the first two months has been absolutely amazing. And uh, this is because of my supervisor as well as my consultant. She's been marvelous. She's an absolute asset to the team. She is an asset to the management as well because uh, I wouldn't be able to say this if I didn't have that feeling about this program, if I didn't have my, you know, if I didn't have a direct uh, interaction of learning from her. And every single day I walk into work, I'm learning something new, I'm learning something very important. And the best part about this training so far has been that she's been able to teach me things that I can actually take forward with me into other rotations. And that's one of the best uh, principles that I'm actually never gonna forget. Uh, they say this all the time in medicine, that uh, medicine is about clinical knowledge, about being able to practice clinical knowledge and being really good as a studious person. But doctor, being a doctor starts off by being a good human being. And that's exactly what I've been able to see in my supervisor. I am absolutely uh, you know, amazed by the fact that she's, uh, what she's been able to do in a short period of time. Um, I, was, I, had, you know, I, was, I had hesitation going into psychiatry because it's something very brand new to me. I really didn't know how to feel about psychiatry. Uh, for me, psychiatry was always, you know, I've only seen psychiatry through the lens of a, a rotation. For me, practicing clinical psychiatry was absolutely like, you know, very new. I had absolutely no idea what I'm gonna be walking into. And the fact that this, uh, my supervisor was able to actually teach me very important skill set in how to approach different cases for psychiatry, how to actually work with the MSC, how to work with your colleagues, how to communicate effectively, how to properly be able to say what you're trying to say when you see an interview or when you actually do an interview with a patient. These things are very, very important for me to take forward into other rotations. Just because these things not just, they don't only apply to psychiatry. They apply to your bedside manners. They apply to how you interact with patients. They apply to your clinical uh, practice of medicine, just in, in general. And um, uh, going back to the same point, in my opinion, what makes a good doctor is not medical knowledge. What makes a good doctor is being aware of their surroundings. What makes a good doctor is, being, um, is humanity at the end of the day practicing medicine, we're, we're all supposed to be focusing on the fact that we are, we are looking after our patients. Our primary objective is to make sure our patients are well looked after. But humanity is an element that we can't uh, forget to uh, think about. And that is the biggest uh, takeaway message from my psychiatry placement at the moment, is that my uh, education supervisor and clinical consultant is a, is a very good human being, and on top of that, her medical knowledge and her medical uh, um, clinical abilities, they just shine that, that much better. 
If you can have all the medical knowledge in the world, but if you don't have the bedside manners, if you don't have the politeness and the respectful, courteous way to approach people, all of that becomes all for naught. And that's one of the biggest messages I take away from my first couple of months in the NHS. I'm fortunate to have my education and clinical supervisor, and uh, I, I wholeheartedly recommend Ashford Liaison Psychiatry for anybody that's considering a future in specialty training for psychiatry, as well as just learning how to, how to communicate well and be an effective team member in the NHS in the first couple of months. Thank you very much, stay tuned. I will be mo moving forward once I transition into how the NHS works in the first couple of weeks. I'll be moving forward into different elements and different, uh, you know, different pathologies and different medical concerns that I've actually been able to learn about and I'll be explaining that ve in very detail. So people, uh, so this um, segment is actually uh, informative in two aspects. It helps people actually think about what the NHS is gonna be like when they transition over, and also about different uh, pathological and different diseases that they are expected to see on a daily basis that they will be able to actually familiarize with themselves uh, themselves with once they actually go through the BNF and CK guidelines. So I will speak about different uh, disorders and different uh, pathologies that I've been able to actually, you know, clinically manage in, in this uh, in psychiatry at the moment. And that'll give you an idea of what to expect when you actually uh, think about psychiatry for yourself. Thank you very much. Stay tuned and uh, there'll be more coming your way.